Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Alessandro Garminadi. Uh, I'm working in Red Hat in the automotive section. And today I, I'm here to show you a tool that I was contributing with in uh, the ELISA project that stem its uh, origin in a Red Hat uh, safety project, which is KSNAB. What is KSNAB? KSNAB is basically a tool that is meant to provide and ease somehow the kernel investigation. It is able to produce some type of diagrams to allow an a person and someone who wants to investigate into the mm, kernel, uh, kernel implementation, how things are done. And uh, the mm, KSNAV has also this concept built in of uh, subsystems that, uh, that seem in the kernel maintainers file. So, it provides this view, which are the call tree diagram. It basically allows you to specify a function as a target and see the call tree in a static, in a static view fashion, which means that you don't see an actual flow, but you see all the possible, um, all the possible path that this uh, call may take. This is particular interesting for uh, safety related investigation because we want to analyze all the possible behavior in order to um, conclude the, a particular flow is safe or not. Another view that the KSNAV can provide is the possibility to see the subsystem view, which is more or less the same of the country view, but instead of showing the single function, it is able to um, show the relation between the, cult, the subsystems. Another view that is important here is the interface mapping, which is um, a view that allows you to specify a function and see the relation, the interface that the subsystem home of this function have with other subsystem. This is useful, for example, when you want to speak with a maintainer and a set within if the, the a particular flow is safe or not. In or, last, in order of uh, development, there is this global sh data sharing. There is another view that allows to, per, to specify a, a function and see which uh, global data is using and which other uh, function is using the same data. So, in order to do this, the KSNAV use uh, um, a binary investigation. In, instead of tackling directly the source code, I prefer to uh, investigate over the binary, the binary image of the kernel, because something that I may not have mentioned before, KSNAV is particularly um, focus on the kernel. The idea itself is extendable to any other binary um, program, but in, for, for example, for, for the subsystem thing, it is heavily uh, depends on the kernel source tree. So why, why did I choose uh, binary over the source, uh, the source code? Sometimes may, someone may be tricked to think that analyze the source code is more easier. In fact, it isn't, because despite being more or less readable from human, the source code has a lot of 
quirk and um, difficulties that are not fitting well with binary with an automated uh, investigation. For example, a, mac a macro is something that is not uh, easily um, um, it's not easy to um, to analyze in uh, in an automated way because even if we have uh, um, a specialized parser for the C, the um, the macros doesn't fall into this because they expand. So in turn, in order to analyze the um, the, the source code, we should have pre-processed all the code before tackling it. Uh, another thing that may be worth noting is that the, mm, a lot of macros depends of configuration parameters, which is something that are not considered. And uh, also, you may have that the kernel code itself is not written in a single language because there are some specific <coughs> place in the kernel where the source code is written directly in assembly. This is the case, for example, of interrupt, uh, interrupt manage management and the early boot things. So the advantages of using binary is that in the end you have all the code already resolved what you see is what you get, more or less the same as um, an editor. You see exactly what you want to analyze. You don't have to pre-process the, um, the thing before uh, working on it. And, uh, and that's it. So, which benefits uh, brings this um, KS nub to user? It simplifies the understanding of the complex uh, kernel interaction by uh, providing these diagrams. It is more easy for humans, typically, to understand some situation with respect, for example, at the source code. And uh, can also enhance the debugging by clarifying the dependencies. Other things that may be useful is that, for example, a maintainer could use KSNAV to see not obvious, um, not obvious dependencies. For example, if it happened that a particular uh, global variable is, um, is changed by the code, it is not evident by, for example, get maintainer to understand that that variable may involve another maintainer in the analysis. This is something that may be worth considering. So, how um, KSNAV works? KSNAV, in, at first, KSNAV is not a single tool, but a tool set. It is composed, in fact, by three parts, which are the kernel BinDB, which is basically the parser of the kernel image. Its duty is to analyze the image using reverse engineering tool like Radare, which is uh, a reverse engineering tool that allows to, um, to dig into, the, into binary. And it fetches cross-references, symbol name, and um, fill up a database. This database then gets used by the nav utility that provides the actual diagram. The third, in turn, is still experimental. It, it is a web interface to, uh, that, allow, that wraps the nav tool and presents this diagram on a web interface. For the moment, it's very limited, but the, the final objective is to have a tool that allows you to browse the kernel source code together with the diagrams. So when they need, you can trigger a diagram uh, drawing and see the part of the code that may be 
of interest. Yes, thank you. Um, one of the dependencies that KSNAV has is the graph bits, which is used for the mm, diagram drawing. And at this point, I will have, uh, I don't prepare the, the video. Okay, I had a video here, but I have not the video. So, in, yes, but uh, I didn't prepare the, the video yet, so. In, since this was the last slide, I will gladly accept uh, a question. If any, yes, please. Function pointers. Yes. Function pointers. Function pointers. Yes, this is uh, a, um, a great question. So KSNAV in this moment for the um, function pointer stops to a virtual subsystem that is called dynamic. Um, dynamic call. Still, I have some pro, uh, some plans to, uh, for the um, KSNAV to solve this by using types. So, whereas whereas for uh, uh, the um, most of the investigation, I need the the binary for function pointer. I may want to use the source code because using this um, because the uh, the, the, the kernel is a self-contained um, code. I'm sure that the um, one of um, there is there can be not uh, any function, but it needs to stay into the into the code. So knowing the type of the call of the indirect call that needs to be made, I can fetch all the possible uh, candidate for that call. I cannot say in a particular situation which one would be because I am in a static analysis, but I, I'm pretty sure that I can provide a list of possible candidate for that. Actually, I, I was going to link this up. Have you considered taking F-trace data and linking up with the static analysis? Have you considered using F-trace data and linking it with the static analysis data that you're collecting? F-trace? The function trace data. Yeah. F-trace data. It shows you which flow because pointers but, are allocated on the, the fly. In that case, I would make an, an dynamic analysis. The F-trace the -trace is something dynamic. And by the way, the F-trace, if I cannot be sure to have considered all the possible, to have test all the possibility, I cannot be sure to have, uh, I am watching all the possible things for that. Yeah, so basically by using F-trace, it will be like reverse engineering based on a specific context of use. So. Yeah, maybe it's a next level tool that could probably marry this to the, yeah. Because most of the um, safety use cases tend, do not tend to be dynamic. What we are trying to do is to get a visualization of how the system looks like, right? And then for each of those flow, what our coverage looks like at the next level. So any one single technique doesn't give you a full picture. 